This is the recording for Chapter 1, Slide Set 1B, um, and we're starting with Slide 7. We had only covered through the um, cephalic regional terms, so I'm going to blow this up a little bit. So I think I am. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so cervical refers to the neck region. Um, you may notice the terms cervical and thoracic are familiar. Um, they are typically used, uh, cervical, thoracic, and lumbar are typically used to describe the vertebrae, um, the sets of vertebrae that form you know, your, your spine or your backbone. There are seven cervical vertebrae, so you see them referred to as C1 through C7. There are 12 thoracic vertebrae, and there are five lumbar vertebrae. So cervical just refers to the neck region. Thoracic refers to the chest region. Specifically, sternal is referring to the um, midpoint of the chest where the breastbone is. The breastbone is called the sternum. Axillary refers to the armpit. Mammary refers to the breast region. Um, the abdominal region is shown in purple, and the umbilical region specifically is also called the navel region or the navel. <laughs> then the pelvic region is the lower portion of the abdominal region. Um, a lot of times together they're called the abdominopelvic region. And the groin is, region is inguinal. And then the pubic or genital region is shown here. If you look up at the top, starting at the top right, we have the upper limb region. Um, the shoulder is acromial. The upper arm in anatomy is the arm. So anytime you say you just use the term arm and don't specify where, it's referring to the brachial region or upper arm. Then we have the um, bend of the elbow is antibrachial. I'm sorry, <laughs> I said that wrong. It's antecubital. And the elbow itself is olecranal. The forearm is antibrachial, the wrist is carpal, and then the hand region is manus, the hand bones are the metacarpals, and then we have the palmar region is the region of the palm, the thumb is called the pollux, and then the fingers are the digital region. Um, they're also known as the phalanges. And then we have the hip, which is coxal, the thigh is femoral or femoral. The knee is patellar, and then the back of the knee is popliteal. The leg in anatomy, when you use just the term leg, you mean the uh, shin or the lower leg, um, and the front side of the lower leg is called the crural or shin region. The calf is sural. And then we have uh, the fibular or Perineal region is the outside portion, the lateral portion of the leg. The foot region is pedal. The ankles are tarsal. The heel is calcaneal. The um, bones of the foot are metatarsals. The toes are digital or um, phalanges. The uh, big toe, great toe, is called the hallux. And then we have the terms on the back side or posterior side. The, um, I'll blow this back up. The upper limb um, shoulder is acromial. I'm only gonna focus on the terms from, that are on the posterior portion. So the elbow is olecranal and the forearm is antibrachial, whether you're looking at the posterior or anterior side of the forearm, it's always antibrachial. Um, the metacarpals are the bones of the hand. Digital or phalanges are the fingers. The thigh region, whether you're looking at anterior or posterior, is uh, femoral. Back of the knee is popliteal. The calf is sorrel. The lateral portion of the leg is fibular or perineal. The heel is calcaneal. The sole of the foot is plantar. Um, perineal, notice the difference between um, peroneal or perineal um, for the 
um, lateral portion of the leg versus perennial, which is between the anus and the external genitalia. Uh, gluteal would be the buttocks. Sacral is the lowest portion of the back. Lumbar is the lower back. Vertebral refers to the region of the vertebrae or spine. Scapular is the uh, shoulder blade. Just the word for back is dorsal. Uh, let's see, the ears are the otic region and um, the back of the head is the occipital region. As far as body planes and sections, a plane is a surface along which um, the body or body structures can be cut so that we can study them. So if it's a sagittal plane, it goes, um, it is a cut basically that divides the body into left and right portions. Frontal or coronal plane is going to divide the body into front and back portions, or what we call anterior and posterior portions. And a transverse plane divides the body into superior and inferior portions. A mid-sagittal plane, also known as a median plane, is perfectly on the midline, and it divides the body into perfect left and right halves. Parasagittal is when it's um, not centered. We already talked about these, and now a, an oblique section is going to be at an angle, and a transverse section is also known as a cross section. So notice how the glass is dividing the body into um, sections. In picture A, you see a median or mid-sagittal plane or section. Frontal or coronal is shown in picture B. Notice how a frontal section or coronal section divides the body into front and back or anterior and posterior portions. And then a transverse section is a cross section. Here's your mid-sagittal section. These are the same ones, sorry. Okay, so we have in section 1.6, we are uh, talking about the body cavities. There are two sets of body cavities, the dorsal and ventral body cavities. In the dorsal body cavity, there are two subdivisions. The cranial cavity encloses the brain and the vertebral cavity encloses the spinal cord. The dorsal cavity is shown in yellow and the ventral body cavity is shown in red. The ventral body cavity is divided into the chest cavity or thoracic and then the abdominal and pelvic cavities. The diaphragm separates the thoracic and abdominal cavities. You also notice over here in picture B, you notice that there is a pericardial cavity which um, includes, encloses the heart. Pleural cavities enclose the lungs. And then we have the mediastinum, which includes, it's everything in the center between the lungs. So um, it's got two portions and it in, includes the pericardial cavity. All right, again, we have two ventral body cavities, the thoracic and the abdominopelvic. The thoracic cavity contains two pleural cavities because there are two lungs. The mediastinum contains the pericardial cavity and also other organs such as the esophagus, the trachea, um, and the pericardial encloses the heart. The abdominal cavity contains the stomach, intestines, spleen, liver, and the pelvic cavity contains the urinary bladder, the reproductive organs, and the rectum. The homeostatic imbalance, um, note number 1.1. Um, so problems are gonna occur when structures stray or push into neighboring cavities. An example is a hiatal hernia, when part of the stomach protrudes through the diaphragm into the thoracic or chest cavity. And this can actually put, push stomach acid into the esophagus, causing acid reflux or heartburn. Sometimes you may have to have surgery to um, correct that. In the ventral body cavity, we have um, three serous membranes. Serous membranes are double-layered membranes. 
they have a parietal layer and a visceral layer. The parietal layer is going to line the body cavity wall. It's going to lie against the body cavity wall. And the visceral layer is going to cover and actually contact your internal organs, which we call the viscera. And then the fluid in between the two layers is called serous fluid. The three serous membranes are the pericardium, which is the membrane surrounding the heart, the pleura, which surround the lungs, and the peritoneum, which surrounds the abdominal pelvic cavity. Notice here that um, for every one of these ser serous membranes, you can relate the visceral and parietal layers to a fist pushing or punching into a balloon. If you punched your fist into a balloon, part of the balloon would touch your fist, and that would represent the visceral layer. And then the part that's on the outside that doesn't actually contact your fist is going to be the parietal layer. So that's how it is for all of these serous membranes. You have the visceral pericardium here, which actually contacts the heart itself. In fact, another word for visceral, visceral pericardium is epicardium. And we'll get to that in um, Bio 169 or AMP2. Then there is the parietal pericardium, which lies against the um, pericardial wall or the thoracic wall. And in between, you have pericardial fluid. Homeostatic imbalance 1.2 um, is referring to infections of the serous membranes. So examples would be pleurisy or inflammation or infection in the pleural membrane, peritonitis, inflammation of the peritoneum. Now, we can divide the abdominal and pelvic cavities, abdominopelvic uh, cavities, into quadrants, and we also can divide them into regions. And this is really um, to, to help us specifically locate certain structures to describe where certain structures are located. An example would be here, you can see the gallbladder is green. The gallbladder is found in the right upper quadrant. So the division goes, the division of, of the quadrants goes right through, crosses right through the umbilical region or the navel. So the part, um, Above are going to be upper quadrants, and below that division are going to be lower quadrants, and you have the right and left upper and lower quadrants. Then you have the regions, which are a little bit harder um, to learn, but they're more specific divisions. So in the center, we'll start with the very center is the umbilical region. Above the umbilical region or superior to the umbilical region is the epigastric, which just means above the stomach. Um, epigastric region and below or inferior to the umbilical region is the hypogastric or pubic region. Now let's go to the left side of the body, which is the right side of the slide. Starting at the top, we have the left hypochondriac region and then the left uh, lateral or lumbar region, and the left inguinal or iliac region. On the right side, you have the very same ones, right hypochondriac, right lateral or lumbar region, and right inguinal or iliac region. And then you can see some of the structures that are located. Now, if we want to describe where the gallbladder is located, we would say that it's located in the right hypochondriac region. If you wanted to, to describe the location of the urinary bladder, it is located in the hypogastric region. Other body cavities um, are listed here. There are oral and digestive cavities, the nasal cavity, orbital cavities, um, which would be the around the eyes, middle ear cavities, and synovial cavities are the joint cavities, like your um, shoulder cavity and your uh, hip hip joint. They have, they're surrounded by synovial membranes, and they're called synovial cavities that enclose those joints.